Evening, everyone. How's everyone doing tonight? It's getting late, so I'll try and make this quick. I'm David Kohler. I'm 19 years old, and I am a magician. It's right, a magician. It's a hobby born from being socially awkward, uh, unathletic, and having far too much time on my hands. First question people like to ask me when they find out I'm a magician is, how did you even get into magic? Well, I discovered the joy of magic when my father showed me my very first card trick. I was just nine years old, but I would like to show that card trick to all of you tonight. So if I could have a volunteer join me on stage. Oh, immediately. What? You can't put your hand up and then put it down. Come on, let's go. Get it on up here. What's your name? All right, cool, cool. What's your name? Uh, Brian. Brian. Yes, sir. Everybody give Brian a big round of applause. Brian, if you come on this side of the stage here for me. Now, Brian, do you know what this is right here? Yeah, a deck of cards. Oh, we got a keen one, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> now, do you know how to shuffle a deck of cards, Brian? Yeah. You do? I think so. All right, well, let's see. I'm just going to cut it, and then just You give it a little. And then you're supposed to, uh, hold on. <laughs> you know, it. Brian, I believed you. Hold on. Hold on. Listen, 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 listen. listen, I'm listening. And then you just. Just like that. And then you, OK, well. <laughs> It's a good thing I've been practicing alone in my room for eight years now. We're just going to do it like this. Mm -hmm. Really just giving me a chance to show off is what you're doing, Brian. Yeah. Do a little some of this right here, yeah. People love this, too. Oh, yeah, magic. Right. So here's what we're going to do, Brian. I'm going to spread the cards out just like this. And what I want you to do is slide one out. It doesn't matter which one. Whichever one is calling out to you the most. OK, fine, we can do that one, too. That's cool, whatever. <laughs> Go ahead, take it, look at it. I'm going to turn around, show everybody else, but don't let me see it, okay? Let me know when you've done that. We good? Yeah. Can I turn back around? Yes, sir. All right, perfect. Now, Brian, I'm going to go like this, and whenever you want, you're just going to say stop, and that's when I'm going to stop, I promise, okay? Stop. Right there. Go ahead and put it back. Perfect. Go somewhere back in the center of the deck. There's no way I can know where it is. Yeah. Now, Brian, I didn't control the card at the top, did I? Mm -mm. I didn't control it to the bottom either. No, sir. No. Now, see, ladies and gentlemen, the reason that I do this is because I want to make sure that I haven't moved the card from out of the center where it was, and also now I only have 50 cards to guess from which one it is. <laughs> I want you to just think about your card, OK? Think about the color. Think about the suit. Yeah. Think about the number. Yes, sir. Look at me. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have some prolonged eye contact here. It's going to get real uncomfortable. <laughs> Say the name of it over and over again in your head. Don't say it out loud, just in your head. I promise you, if you mess up in front of all this crowd. Yeah. You think you feel the pressure right now. Brian, for the first time, name the card out loud. Five of diamonds. That was a joke, right? It was five. Oh. No, I'm just kidding. The five of diamonds, ladies oh. and gentlemen. <laughs> Brian, thank you so much. Now, I know that for many of you, that seems like nothing more than a simple card trick. But when I was nine years old, that card trick was nothing short of a miracle. <laughs> from that day on, I fell in love with the art of magic. But I didn't start taking it seriously until I was 12 years old. And that's when it truly had an impact on my life. Now, yeah, that's not the word I would use. <laughs> When I was 12 years old, I was in eighth grade. And needless to say, I was a little bit awkward. I had glasses, braces, and a wonderful Great Clips bowl cut to bring it all together. <laughs> but magic, performing magic for my peers, it really helped me come out of my shell. And I'll never forget the first time that I ever did it. It was in my keyboarding class. We had a little bit of extra time at the end of the period. And as I normally did, I took out my cards and I started shuffling. But as you heard just there, when Brian and I both shuffled the cards, the sound of sh cards being shuffled is not a quiet one. So a kid from across the room came over to see what I was doing. But ladies and gentlemen, this was not just any kid. This was the captain of the baseball team. <laughs> yeah, I know. The exact opposite of a magician. <laughs> he came up to me and he said, hey, show me a card trick. And before I could even mutter the words under my nervous breath, pick a card, the entire class had gotten up and surrounded my desk to come and watch. And as you can imagine, that kid right there, he was very, very nervous. <laughs> but as I started performing, all of the anxiety that I felt, all of the awkwardness, it just seemed to fade away. 
because I found that when I'm holding a deck of cards, I am my most confident self. Aww. Oh, very cute. <laughs> but don't awe yet because I know that my story is not unique to me. There are countless magicians around the world who have been impacted by the art of magic. So over the summer last year, I reached out to the community and I asked them to share their stories with me, stories of how magic had impacted their lives. And I'd like to share just one of my favorites with you tonight. Hey, my name is Asher. Magic has changed me in many ways. Yes, I've learned more tricks than I can count, but that's not why I do magic. I don't do magic solely to fool people. I do it because it's a way to relate to people. When I do magic, there's always a moment that is created that I get to experience with my audience. The moment where everything stops. Phones aren't ringing, people aren't watching YouTube videos or checking their Instagrams. They're watching something magical happen right before their very eyes. 14 years old. Yes, everyone, please. Thank you. Asher's a remarkable young man, and it's clear that magic has impacted the lives of those that perform it. But for the audience, it's something entirely different. It's that feeling that you get. A feeling that almost takes you back in time, gives you that childlike sense of wonder. That curiosity, that imagination, that fascination with magic, it's something that a lot of us haven't felt in a very long time. But even a simple little card trick like that can bring it back. Just like any other art form, magic also has the incredible ability to connect us as people. My grandfather is a first-generation immigrant from the Philippines, and while he does speak English pretty well, communication can sometimes be difficult. But every time I go and see him, he always asks me one thing, show me a magic trick. <laughs> and every time, that look of joy on his face, the light in his eyes, that's what really keeps me going. So why do I believe that magic is more important now than ever before? Well, let's face it. We live in a pretty dark time. The world around us can be a very, very scary place. And it's hard not to focus on the darkness that surrounds us constantly. But to quote one of my favorite magicians of all time, and one of the best, Albus Dumbledore. <laughs> Happiness can be found in the darkest of times, if one only remembers to turn on the light. And I believe that magic is that light. Because you see, when you're watching a magic trick, no matter what's going on in the world around you, there is nothing but wonder and amazement. Something like a simple little card trick can make you realize just how wonderful the little moments in your life can be. And with that in mind, I'd like to show you all one more piece of magic. So if I can get another volunteer to come up on stage with me. Uh, in the back there, in the orange, is that orange or is it? Yes, what's your name? Emily. Emily, everybody give Emily a big round of applause as she joins me on stage. <laughs> oh yes, you want to make sure so that when the camera sees it, you become famous, right? Yeah. The only Emily in the entire world, ladies and gentlemen. Emily, we're going to try something kind of interesting here. Cool. What I would like you to do is I would like you to think of a beautiful moment from your life. Don't tell me what it is, but just imagine it in your head mm -hmm. as if you're going back in time to that moment. Mm -hmm. Do you have a moment? Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Emily, I've got a watch here. Okay. And I'm going to set a very specific time on this watch. Okay. Are you right-handed or left-handed? Right-handed. Will you hold your right hand out over the table for me just like this? Perfect. No, I mean, you can put it on the table if you'd like. It doesn't really matter to me. That was a very nice magical gesture, though. <laughs> I'm going to place this watch in your hand, and I'm not going to touch it for the rest of the performance. Okay. Okay. Emily, I want you to close your eyes, and I want you to picture yourself in that beautiful moment that you're imagining, one that you might even describe as magical. Mm -hmm. Now, do you mind describing to the audience what it is, the moment that you're thinking of this? Sure. Uh, it was actually my very first dance class when I was two and a half years old. When you were two and a half years old. Mm -hmm. Incredible. And you've been dancing ever since? Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. Um, so, Emily, <laughs> close your eyes, and just imagine yourself in that moment. Mm -hmm. Picture everything that's around you, the sights, the sounds, the feelings that you get. Can you describe the emotions to the audience that you're feeling? Oh yes, uh, I was crying actually, I was terrified. <laughs> my parents were in another room watching me and I went to cry inside my dad's lap for my entire ballet lesson. Uh, and then they said, well you get to tap, so I put my tap shoes on and then went back in class. Crying in your father's lap, that sounds like what I wanted to do it's right magical. before I got up on stage. Yeah, that's how I feel <laughs> every time that I perform. But guess what? That feeling is 100% normal, but that moment is something that you remember as beautiful, something as magical, right? Because it, it started your love of dance. Mm -hmm. Now I want you to imagine that in that moment you could freeze time. Okay. And on your wrist is a very tiny two-year-old watch. Okay. <laughs> and I want you to look down as you freeze time and notice what time it is on that watch. And if you could say out loud to the audience and to me what time it is in your memory. It's like 2 p.m. Exactly 2 p.m. 2 p.m.? Really? Yeah. Okay. 2 p.m. no way. 
ladies and gentlemen. No, of course not, right? Because that's the part about life and magic that is beautiful. Sometimes we don't know what's going to happen next. The uncertainty is what makes it beautiful. And there's no way that I could know what time you were thinking of before I put that watch in your hand. I want you to watch me very closely. I'm not going to touch the watch or the crown at all. But will you just tell everybody what time it is on the watch right there? It is exactly 2 p.m. <laughs> Thank you so much. So, a lot to unpack there, but <laughs> magic is a wonderful thing, but a card trick or even a trick like that is not the most pure form of magic. The most pure form of magic is something that we all have inside of us. It's the ability to find beauty in the little moments in life, the little moments where you're crying in your dance class, the little moments where you're performing a TEDx speech on stage, the little moments even at your nine to five job where you're just pushing paper. Because I swear if you can find the beautiful moments, the magical moments in your life, this world becomes a much better place. Thank you guys so much.